Intelligent Concrete, where innovation and sustainability meet technology. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I guess it's a uh, good morning out there. My name is Dr. John Belkowitz. I'm the CTO of Intelligent Concrete. And the purpose of my presentation is to go into the impact of nanosilica on ASR gel expansion. Now, if you don't know what alkali silica reactivity here is, uh, this wonderful picture that I posted gives you a quick glimpse into the magical world of what we're dealing with here. And what you see is a combination of alkali silica reactivity and steel corrosion that is causing this water reclamation project, this dam locker levee, to fall apart at an accelerated rate long before its service life. Now, the motivation, uh, excuse me, a quick little roadmap of what we're going to be doing today. Motivation, uh, of why we're doing this a little bit more, but we, we just went into. Then I want to define the solution to this big problem. Uh, nanosilica, identify that, define that. And then we're going to go into the unique methodology that we use to analyze this ASR gel uh, using the nanosilica. And of course, without the nanosilica, then we'll wrap it up with a concise summary and open up the floor for any questions. Um, now, just a recap on who we are, what we do. Uh, like I said, I'm the CTO here at Intelligent Concrete. And our main focus is bringing new and emerging technologies to the concrete industry to save the world with all the concrete in it. And we do that by using a, a combined levels of, tech, uh, of testing for a technical transfer from the lab to the field. Um, and as uh, I want to go into a lot more information about nanosilica and what it can do, there just isn't enough time. So I encourage you to check out our YouTube channel, Intelligent Concrete. We have over 800 videos and a whole bunch more that goes into this awesome new and emerging technology. But let's get back into it. The, the motivation. It was a, a wonderful paper written by Herkham Bardage. Uh, and their group at the uh, Denver Federal Center for the Bureau of Reclamation and ultimately highlighted the three reasons why we're seeing so much more of an emergence with alkali silica reactivity. And it, it stems from these, these higher alkali cements that we've been using combined with the fact that we've used up most of our quality aggregate and now we're scraping the bottom of pits or just getting into lenses that are just much more reactive. And the unfortunate reality is the way we've been going with renewable energy, we just don't have that coal combustion residue like we used to. Not saying that we don't have harvested ashes or pond ashes, but we don't have that solution that we used to to this a to this to this ASR issue. And here's a rudimentary diagram. I keep assuming that everybody in the audience knows what alkali silica reaction is from left to right over time. We have our reactive aggregates surrounded by our uh, hydrated cement matrix with our alkalis in it. And over time, around this aggregate creates this uh, gel that expands. And as it expands over more time, it creates these residual stresses that overcome the tensile capacity of the hydrated cement, hydrated cement matrix and the aggregate cracking them. And then that cracking allows more moisture and alkalis to come in, exacerbating the problem. And let's take a look at it under the microscope. And here it is in all its glory, the ASR gel rosette in a scanning electron microscope. Even closer, you can see those wispy-like fibers that make up not just the viscoelastic properties, but that, that phenomena to imbibe more fluids, which will cause that expansion to thrive and survive and continue to polymerize. So then what is the solution? This nanosilica is a liquid dispersion, often seen as clear to milky. And depending on the type and solids concentration you're going to get, uh, you're looking at a surface area anywhere between eight to five or eighty, excuse me, to five hundred meters square per gram, and a solids content fifteen to fifty percent. And again, as seen in the picture uh, in front of you, has that clear to milky appearance. A larger slide here. Um, jump real quick putting it under the microscope and comparing it to one of those mature technologies, Class F Flyers, which is also a pozzolanic material comparable to nanosilica. These two supplementary cementitious materials, that's where their similarities end, outside of the spherical shape. But when we look at nanosilica, it's a thousand times smaller, and on the chemical side, is a 98% purity, much more pure than the Class F fly ash or microsilicas that we are used to. And just for a reference, a, 
uh, a human hair uh, is around 100 to 150,000 nanometers in diameter. So I'll give you an idea of what we're dealing with here in solution. Now, onto that unique process that we used, and ultimately it was this British test where we're taking this this gradation of aggregate that we've ground sieved and cleaned one to two millimeters and we're creating a almost a pervious concrete but it's a about a one and a half inch diameter puck by half inch tall three quarters inch tall and and we're creating it so fluid can you know move through it almost like a pervious concrete and then what we're doing is abrading that top layer of cement paste 24 hours after we cast and cure this and then putting in a cement simulated uh, pore solution so that we create an environment, a heated environment that is conducive for this ASR gel to polymer, polymerize, thrive, and survive in a 72-hour period. And the first thing that we look for is the presence of this ASR gel. On the left-hand side, we have our puck without our pat, without the nanosilicon. You can see this white fuzzy stuff, and that is our ASR gel. And on the right-hand side with our nanosilica, you almost can't see any ASR gel, and that's the presence that we were talking about. And in the paper, we use area fraction analysis to quantify the change in that presence of ASR gel. And then we take those same samples, put under a scanning electron microscope to look at the morphology of the gel and how the uh, nanosilica changes it from those wispy like fibers that we saw before to this more open matrix that has a change in the um, gel itself from that wispy like fiber to a fiber that has a larger radius to it but more open space in between the individual fibers of that morphology as we see with the nanosilica. Under the scanning electron microscope we're also using energy dispersive x-ray analysis to look at the change in silica and calcium content and as we add more nanosilica and larger nanosilica we find that our ASR gel has more of that open structure that we just saw, but it also has more silica, less less calcium too. We see a decrease in calcium. And in the future, we're also going to look at is the viscoelastic properties of these gels using nano indentation. And, and really to summarize what we saw with this nanosilica is a, a reduced presence of ASR gel. And again, we were using this test because normally in other tests, you got to cut, splice, throw epoxy around it. It's in a destructed state that you're looking at this ASR gel. Here, you're looking at it undisturbed in a, an area where it's allowed to grow. So by using the nanosilica, we found that this, this presence of ASR gel was reduced significantly. Um, also had an impact on changing the morphology, changing that, that wispy-like structure into more of an open structure and the addition of the nanosilica also reduced the amount of calcium in these gels and increased the silica ultimately creating an environment where the ASR gel will not have the ability to thrive survive and then polymerize. Uh, at this point I'd like to open up the floor for any questions and remind everybody uh, to check out our YouTube channel for uh, more information about nanosilica and clotosilica for concrete. Thanks for your time.